Can you photograph Jupiter with your phone? You sure can with the right tools and techniques. This is Jupiter, photographed with a phone, a DSLR, and a dedicated planetary camera. Let me show you what each level can do. But first, what do you need to take a photo of Jupiter? Well, first and foremost, you need optics. And you'll know that I said optics and not telescope because although a telescope will make things easier, you just need something to get you closer to the planet. It can be a set of binoculars or even a camera lens. That said, having a telescope will make things a lot easier, especially anything with a bigger aperture. I'll be using my Celestron Edge HD8. It's an eight inch mid cast grain telescope. You don't need something this large, but it does help. This telescope has a focal length of about 2032 millimeters or about 80 inches, which is why Jupiter appears really nice and big through the eyepiece here. And my telescope is also on a tracking mount, which means that it rotates to compensate for the Earth's rotation so that whatever I'm tracking is still in the center. It's kind of like keeping the Milky Way centered in this time lapse, but zoomed in a whole lot more. A tracking mount isn't required, but it does help so that you don't have to keep reframing the planet. That's basically all the requirements we have on the telescope side. So let's dive into level one photography, cell phone with a telescope. So first you need a cell phone that allows you to control the ISO and gain settings. Some phones don't do that. My phone, the Pixel XL Pro 9, does let me control the ISO and gain settings. But if you don't, one app that I've seen that works is ProCam X. But if you have an app that you like using, drop that name in the comments below to help others out. Let's quickly cover the camera settings. So now we're gonna make sure that our phone can take images that we want. So I'm gonna go into my settings here, look up the manual for your camera, and we're gonna go to the pro option here. And we wanna make sure that the lens selection here is manual and not automatic. And the reason is because sometimes your phone will switch cameras based on proximity and zoom, and we don't want that. The other thing you may want to do is turn on RAW. So right now I have it on JPEG only, but you can do RAW and JPEG. RAW gives you access to more of the data if you want to post-process later on, but for this video, I'm not going to do that. And the resolution, you can leave alone. And that's basically all the settings we need. And once we have that done, we can go to the little icon here on the bottom right-hand side for controlling the exposures. Go to the right, and we can see shutter speed and ISO. That's basically what we want to change. Now let's install this in our eyepiece. Next thing we'll need is an eyepiece. I'll be using a 40 millimeter eyepiece. This is a Celestron, it's pretty wide field and a seven millimeter eyepiece for extra power. With visual astronomy, in order to zoom into something, you just change eyepieces and go with a lower number. A lower number means higher magnification and higher power. The 40 millimeter gives me about a 50 or 51 X or 51 times magnification, and the seven millimeter bumps me up to 290 X, 290 times magnification. Now the next thing isn't required, but I highly recommend it because it will make imaging with your phone a lot easier. And that's an eyepiece phone adapter. It kind of looks like this where the eyepiece just goes through here. It clamps on, you put the phone here, the camera faces the eyepiece, then you can stick it in. Let's see how that's installed. So we're gonna install our phone on a phone mount with the eyepiece here. And you wanna make sure the eyepiece goes through this hole here and the phone will go over here. So we're gonna stick the eyepiece piece through here like here and then we're going to tighten this up a little bit there you go it works pretty well and the phone is going to go right here all right it helps if you have the camera on already because you can then see where the eyepiece is and you can try and position it so that it stays in view and we just go in there and then we can adjust where the phone is we can move it up and down there are knobs on this side to make it allow you to move it up and down and left to right. All right. Once you have it set, if your ma if your phone adapter has tightening screws, just tighten them so that it doesn't move as easily. And now you can take this and install it on your camera, on your telescope. And I'm going to use my trusty Meet ETX90 to demonstrate this, which has a built-in diagonal. So you just put the eyepiece in through here, you, know, you tighten this up, now you can see the eyepiece through there. It's a little bit hard to see because now you know it's, it's looking through the telescope, which is not looking at anything, but this is what the setup should look like. And this is what I have outside. And when I take a photo of Jupiter through the 40 millimeter eyepiece, that's what it looks like. But let's zoom in with the seven millimeter eyepiece that's installed the exact same way. And then you just need to focus the telescope and we can get something like this. And when it comes to the exposure settings, the ISO is a gain setting, which means it make your images brighter, but the higher the number, the more noise you'll get. So I recommend starting with a low ISO and then change the exposure time to something pretty fast and then go from there. Look at these images. These are just JPEGs out of the phone. 
what do you think about it? When we look at Jupiter through this telescope, visually, we can see all four Galilean moons really easily. And if you want to be able to take images of them, you need to take two exposures. And the reason is because cameras in general are not good at taking high dynamic range exposures. High dynamic range means you get both the dim end, the low light end, and the highlight or the really bright end of objects that you're imaging. And in this case, the moons are pretty dim and Jupiter is really bright. Our eyes are kind of magical and it adjusts to both exposures really well, really easily. But with the foam, we need to take separate exposures for those two and then you can combine them later on and make it look kind of nice. I could also recommend taking a video because then you can take the individual frames and find all the good ones and then stack them. There are ways to programmatically do it. And before we get to level two imaging with a DSLR, I just want to say that if you're in the Boston or Cambridge area, stick around because I'll tell you how you can attend a star party where you can take a photo of Jupiter using one of my telescopes. For level two, I'll be using my Canon T5i. I've had this for a long time and the reason I like this is because it has a flip out LCD screen. So I recommend any camera that has this because it's a real neck saver. And you can basically use any camera with an interchangeable lens. So this one I can take off and install other lenses. And when we put this into our telescope, this basically becomes the eyepiece. And then what you'd buy is this thing. This is called a T-ring. This is from Canon. I've had this for 14 years. And this just snaps on to the camera here. And now I have access to 42 millimeter threads or M42. And then you get something else. This is called a T adapter. What that does is this just screws on here. And there you go. So now this has basically the same barrel as an eyepiece. And now this goes into the telescope. Now to install this on a telescope, if you have a diagonal, which my ETX90 does, so I'm not using it for this one, you need to take that diagonal out and then install the camera directly into where the diagonal would go like so and then tighten it. And now this is the eyepiece and the telescope is basically the camera's lens. So I install this outside and I look at my LCD screen and focus. And you may need to overexpose Jupiter a little bit to get it to focus and then adjust the ISO and the exposure settings until it starts to look good. And if you take a photo and the results look a little bit too bright, either decrease the ISO or increase the shutter speed and try again. And if it looks too dim, do the opposite with the ISO and shutter speeds. As we saw with cell phone photography, if you wanna zoom in, the best way to do that is to go from a low power eyepiece to a higher power eyepiece. So how do you do that with a camera and a telescope when the camera itself is supposed to be the eyepiece? So luckily we can use something called a Barlow lens. This is a Celestron Omni Barlow lens. I've had this for 14 years now. It is a 2X Barlow, which means that it magnifies whatever we're looking at two times. You can also get a 3X Barlow, which I have from Teleview. And if you have a little bit more money to spend, you can get something called a PowerMate. This is a Teleview PowerMate. The quality out of this is a little bit better, but it's also a lot more expensive than the Celestron Omni. Right, to install a Barlow, all you need to do is take this and your camera, just put it in where the eyepiece would go, tighten the knob, and now the Barlow goes into your telescope, like so. and then you refocus. It's as easy as that. But outside, I use my Teleview 2.5X PowerMate, and voila, Jupiter now looks a lot bigger. Jupiter honestly looks pretty amazing here, if I say so myself. And do you see that pimple on the bottom right side there? Well, that's the moon Io. It was on its way to be in front of the planet to cause an eclipse. We call that a transit from Earth. You can see Jupiter shaking, the atmosphere is turbulent, and this is called lucky imaging. And we're taking 30 frames per second, and we're hoping to get a handful of really good frames that we can stack later on. And when we do stack them, this is what we get. Jupiter looks smoother, less noisy, and all of the bad frames were basically thrown out by software. And then we can do further post-processing on this to make it look even better. And now Io, that little pimple, looks even better here. If I zoom in a lot, it looks pretty terrible, but I still think it looks pretty cool. Let's talk about level three imaging, which is with a dedicated planetary camera. And I'll be using, once again, the Ioptron iCam 464C that I've had on long-term loan from Ioptron. It has a tiny sensor in the front. It has small pixels so that we can get finer details on Jupiter. And it works really well with the telescopes that I have. And this is a little bit more intimidating for people because you need some kind of computer. Because as you can see, there's no screen attached to this like a phone or DSLR. But all you need is one USB cable and then you plug it in 
to any computer and you use software like fire capture or sharp cap and you can take images or usually you take videos and once again just like a dslr if you want to zoom in all you need is a barlow or a PowerMate and the eyepiece camera that some people will call it which just goes right in you tighten it up and then this becomes your new camera and now you have twice the zoom or two three x the zoom if you have a three x barlow and then you just take images as you normally would and this is what Jupiter looks like through this and a power mate. It doesn't look as great because the clouds started coming in and the atmosphere became really turbulent. I find that it works better than a DSLR usually when the scene conditions are the same. And once I take a video, I can stack it to get something like this. And I can post process it further using the same methods as a DSLR and I can get something like this. This came out much better than I expected considering the terrible sky conditions that night. Then all three images that you saw with the phone DSLR and an Astrocam were all taken in the same night within an hour of each other. And speaking of terrible skies, that brings me to some of the downsides of using a large telescope. When you have such a large telescope and you're zoomed in that much to whatever you're looking at, the slightest atmospheric disturbances will get picked up by your camera. It's, a, it's less obvious when you're visually observing unless it's really bad, but a camera will pick those up really easily. So in that case, using a shorter focal length or a lower power refractor is usually the better way to go. Like when I use my 71F to look at Jupiter, I barely see the atmospheric disturbances, but the trade-off is that Jupiter looks much smaller than with my eight inch Schmidt Cassegrain. But both of these are really nice tools to look through and to photograph Jupiter with. Another downside of using such a large telescope is portability. Like if you have to move from one location to another because the planet has gone behind a tree, it's harder to do that. And if you're worried about that, don't worry, you may not have to because in a few weeks, I will be out at a star party in East Boston and you could join me and you can bring your cell phone and you say, hey Naz, I wanna take a photo of Jupiter and I will be there to help you take a photo of Jupiter through one of my telescopes. It'll most likely be my six inch Schmidt Cassegrain. It's an orange tube. It's a lot more portable than my eight inch. And I will be there with my phone mount and I'll help whoever asks me to help them take a photo of Jupiter. I would highly recommend you follow this organization I've been volunteering with, hashtag Popscope. I'll link to their Instagram page in the description, so give them a follow. I'll also link to my Instagram page because I volunteer with them along with the Amateur Telescope Makers of Boston. And start, recently I started volunteering with the Harvard College Observatory and I do a lot of stuff on my own and I've been trying to do a little bit better at telling people about these outreach events. And if you do outreach and you want to show people space, if you're in this area and you want to join, this group let me know we'd love to hear from you but if you're elsewhere and you want to show people space through your telescope i think we should connect most of the world's population will never see through a telescope they won't know what they're missing and i think we can change that and if you'd like to support me and my ventures in astronomy consider joining these people who are my supporters on patreon buy me a coffee and youtube i'm always extremely grateful so please check the links in the description below and in the pinned comment if you have questions or comments, I'd love to hear from you. If you take photos of Jupiter, I would love to see them. There is also an invite link to our Discord server below. So join, share your photos. I'd love to see them. And until next time, happy planet gazing, happy stargazing, and clear sky.